welcome back to She Is Simone. I'm Simone. Thank you for joining me here today. If you're new, welcome. If you're joining me again, welcome back. I just wanted to come to you guys with a little, not really a Bible study, but just like some tips. We're going to be talking about five ways to stay close to God in 2022. And of course, beyond and beyond, this will always be applicable. So let's jump right in and get started. All right, number one is study the word. Yes, guys, please, in 2022, study your word so you can show yourself approved. But anyway, <laughs> yes, this is my number one ways to stay close to God. I think it's very important. I mean, I don't really know how you can be a follower of Christ if you're not in your word personally. I mean, he's given us 66 books to know him, to grow closer, to have instruction, to walk out this life, you know, with God so that we can, you know, enter into salvation and we can reap the benefits of walking with Christ. No better way to do that than to study your word. Um, Deuteronomy, I think it's 30 and 14, talks about having the word in your mouth and your heart. And I think that's just great to, you know, if you're going through something, Holy Spirit can drop a scripture, you know, in your spirit, and that can help you through that time. And he can't do that if you ain't got no word in you. He can't just be like, I mean, he can, he can still encourage you, but it's always good to have the scripture. And also it's helpful in your prayer life. You can pray the scriptures, put God in remembrance of his word. I think there's another Bible verse that talks about that. You know, we can go on and on about scripture about reading the word. I mean, of course, it's going to tell us to read the word because it is the word. But yeah, and then you have John 1, 1, which talks about in the beginning, there was the word, the word was God and the word was with God. So, I mean, this is basically saying, if you want to be with God, read his word. If you want to know God, read his word. God is his word and he does not change his mind everything in the bible is still applicable today i think there's another scripture that talks about it's alive and active sharpening into its sword help you in correcting some behaviors that might not have been so christ-like you know before we came to christ and was living how we wanted to live and this will transform you renew you all those great things so yeah and if you hear anything we have little barley here he wants to be on YouTube as well. So, you know, I have to dedicate some videos to him, but yeah. <laughs> I think that's mainly everything I wanted to say about studying the word. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to number two, which is prayer and fasting. Yes, guys, we're gonna miss some meals in 2022. <laughs> We want to make sure that we're clear on the definition of fasting. That's restraining from food for a certain period of time. Rather, you do six to six. Whatever time that you choose, you need to lay that out before you start your fast. You know, you don't want to be switching it up every day. Oh, well, I got hungry at 12. So now, now you just fast at 12 when you set out to do six to six. So you want to set that, um, stick with it. And you want to make sure that you're praying throughout the day. If you're not praying, then you're just starving yourself, you know. And at that point, just go ahead and eat because <laughs> it's not going to benefit you. You have to spend time with God in conjunction to fasting. And, you know, you make sure you want to drink plenty of water. Um, and I think it's just important to do throughout the year. That's going to help you to refocus, to get back in alignment. If there's some things, some changes that you want to see that you haven't it's always good to do a little prayer fasting and see some breakthrough and yes so i just wanted to touch on mark 9 14 through 24 or 28 somewhere around there when it talks about the um disciples when jesus was still you know um, doing his ministry here on the earth they had an unclean spirit someone came with an unclean spirit and they weren't able to get rid of it and then they asked Jesus why why could we not get rid of this unclean spirit and basically he said some things only go by prayer and fasting so guys you have something that won't let you go that you're struggling with continuously prayer and fasting and you will see a breakthrough then there's also some other scriptures that talks about how to fast you have isaiah 58 and jeremiah 14 that go into more detail about what you should do during your fast 
um, to make sure that you're doing in a way that is pleasing to God. You know, it talks about not going and telling everyone, oh, well, it's me, I'm not eating and praying. Like, that's gonna be your benefit when you're fasting. You wanna look as normal as possible. You know, of course, after if it's so many days, people will start to guess, but you just don't wanna be running around, hey, y'all, I'm fasting, because that'll be your benefit. And mm, I'd rather have what God has for me than for people to be like, oh, yeah, girl, that's great. Mm hmm. So, yeah. You know, go read those two scriptures again. That's Isaiah 58 and Jeremiah 14, and it gives more details um, on how you should go about your fasting and prayer. Remember, prayer and fasting together. All right. <laughs> so now we're going on to number three, which is journaling and devotional. So this is not something that I do every day or anything that's like required but i have found some benefits to it um it's always good to write down things that you've prayed for you can go back and see how god has answered it because it's your memory is like mine you may forget and you're like oh i did pray for that and oh i do have that now and then you can be like yes lord thank you for answering my prayer and also a devotional is good because it can help you to study the word deeper um, and you know just have that dedicated time or whatever for that and you can go deeper with god in your devotional it's here and i also have brought my devotional that i got from shanti she's here on the back this is her 52 week coloring book journal and this one's really cool because it has pictures let's see i started coloring one of them so yeah you can color it and who doesn't like coloring yes adults we still like to color so that's really nice and this one is 52 weeks so it'll get you through the entire year so i've started so far on week one and don't beat yourself up if you skip a week or anything like that or if you don't journal every day it's not meant to be a chore it's meant to be something enjoyable and to help you so if you find benefits in journaling or a devotional and it doesn't have to be this one you can get whatever one you want something even in the bible plan like those plans are basically daily devotionals so you can use something like that on the you version bible app or whatever it is um but yeah i think journaling and devotional will be a great way just to keep track write down what you hear from the lord and all those type things so moving on to number four godly community yes guys please don't do this alone as my pastor says <laughs> but um yeah godly community is very important because you know when you're trying to do something different than what the world is doing it's always good to have people around you that are also trying to be different trying to grow trying to be obedient trying to live in god's will and all of those things so rather that is your local church you may have a church that has small groups where they gather throughout the week and discuss the scripture or however that one is set up that is a great way or if you don't have a local church you can find an online community but it's best to have someone of like mindedness you know you can have your friends that may not be doing what you're doing but you definitely need people that are trying to live for christ so that y'all can hold each other accountable if there's something you're struggling with i don't know single ladies you know single men it's always good to have accountability partner when you're dating so you can stay on course so that you can have someone that will hold you accountable like hey can you check on me around this time or whatever so that you are staying on track to what you set out to do and it's not just to have someone to be in your business please Pick your accountability partners wisely. You don't want someone who gossips or anything like that. You want someone who genuinely cares about you and wants to help you to do the things that you want to do and also that God wants you to do. And there's scripture to back this up, of course. And we know that God was in community himself. It was God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if God needs community, so do you and also found in hebrews 24 and 25 to have each other to spur one another along in this journey in this walk and then you also have romans 12 4 through 5 that talks about uh where two or three gather god is in the midst so 
you need community. And I mean, there's so many scriptures. It talks about if one falls, if he's alone, we'll be there to pick him up. I forget, I think that's somewhere in the Old Testament, if I remember correctly. And you know, the three string cord is better. You, all these things basically get you some godly community so that you don't have to do life alone, that you can, you know, have that accountability and you can fight the good fight of faith together. And moving on to my last one, number five is worship. Yes, guys, spend some time in worship. Praise the Lord so that you can shrink those things, those trials and things don't look so big when you can refocus your mind on worship. And the definition for worship, at least biblically speaking, it doesn't necessarily have to be a song or anything like that. The definition is to bow down before God, prostrate or lay prostrate um, in reverence to him, lifting up his name. So this doesn't mean just worship on Sunday, which is great, which is a corporate worship, which I love. I always love that portion of um, service. Um, and then also you can worship God through instrumentals if you, you know, are gifted that way, or if you like to dance, um, sing, um, poetry. There's all types of ways to worship God. I mean, it, you should really worship God in everything that you do. Everything you should do should bring glory to God. So that is important. Um, Psalms 150 verse 6 talks about everyone that has breath, praise the Lord, and we are breathing, praise God, despite of this virus that's going around. If you have breath, we all have something to be thankful to God for. So worship is important. And also Exodus 23, 25 talks about when we worship God, he blesses us. I don't know about y'all, but I wanna be blessed. You wanna be blessed. So even as you're blessing God with your words and all those things, he blesses you. So, you know, worship a God inhabits our praises. So when we're worshiping, we're praising God. He's with us. He worship. Know that God is near you. So yeah, guys, that's all that I have. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, share this. And if you're not subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss a video I post once a week. So yeah, thank you all so much for joining me. Happy New Year. Oh, I hope that 2022, so struggle to get that out, will be your best year yet. Thanks.